Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'd like to present to you my Center Burst Afghan and this is using the new Bernat Velvet yarn. So here's what the yarn looks like here if you go to find it and it is extremely soft. I think this is gonna be the, one of the biggest uh, yarns out there for maybe 2018 and definitely for 2019. I love the weight of this yarn. I love the feel of this yarn. I love the look of this yarn. Everything about this yarn I love. So what we have here is uh, designed by me where you're going to start off with the center in this is made up in squares. So there is a total of 12 squares that make up this particular afghan. So it's three by four for the configuration. So these squares are actually pretty big in size. They're a total of 15 inches by 15 inches and you just start off with the center. Now what's gonna throw you off is this bursting of color right here and this is really quite amazing. So let me tell you a little bit about that. When you go to look at the back of one of these squares you're going to notice that there is a traveling seam line. So see how it just is I can reach it and grab it. What this is is that it's just resting. So when you see it up at the front here what's happened is that you are literally crocheting around it and moving it into position and out of place in order to create this look. So it's actually a really neat idea when you're going to be able to do this. So I think it's a really kind of a, a fun way. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how that's done. There's really no easy way to explain it in uh, written format so I'm going to show that to you instead. So the tutorial is going to have it showing you how to do these squares and then there's two rounds at the border. So what colors are you going to need? So you're going to need a total of seven Bernat Velvet Balls. So you'll need two soft blues. You will need two terracottas, terracotta rose just like you see. And then you're going to need only one of this uh, velvet teal which is this color of the burst and then you'll need two vapor grays that you see. So it's a really neat particular afghan to do. So once you get the squares done you're just going to whip stitch them together. So just using your terracotta rose just whip stitch them together. So the border is very simple and then what you have is that you're going to start off in a corner wherever the corner may be and uh, I'm sure it's just around the corner here. So what's gonna happen is you're going to join it into a corner and remember you're gonna chain up three and that counts as a double crochet and you're gonna put four more double crochets and you're going to follow it all the way across and double crochet around. So in the corners you will put five double crochets. The final round is my favorite kind of edging is the pico edging and what's gonna happen is that you're going to single crochet pico and then single crochet in the next. So then move to the next single crochet pico, single crochet in the next and you get to this really beautiful edge that you see. So this tutorial that I have for you is uh, using Karen one pound yarn. It may be easier for you to see uh, but uh, this yarn is very easy to work with but because I've already kind of filmed this already um, I might as well show you the existing tutorial because it's exactly what we're gonna do today. So you uh, can enjoy your afghan and without further ado let's get started and let's direct you down to that particular tutorial. We'll see you again real soon and enjoy. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at joanne.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we are working on the New Orleans Mardi Gras Crochet Cruise Square. Now for everybody else you can work on this as well but for my cruiser friends we're gonna be doing this as our charity project which is a celebration of color. You will notice that the colors that you see are meant for Mardi Gras but you and the cruise you can express your own creativity, your own colors and all I need you to do is pay attention to the pattern as well as the sizing so that you can mix and match your squares with other squares on the cruise ship. Let me tell you a little bit more about this. My cruiser friends you have to worry about your sizing. So when you have this what you have is that you're going to measure it out and it has to be a certain uh, dimension. So it's about 12 inches across for your square. So what I would recommend and that we're gonna do this in tutorial format is that we are going to do a quick measurement after we do the middle circle. You'll be able to know after that middle circle whether you're too tight or whether you're too loose. So what happens if you're too tight? Well you're going to increase your hook. You'll make your hook size a little bit bigger and restart. Now if you're way too tight then what you want to do, sorry if you're way too loose your square circle will be bigger so you're going to decrease your crochet hook. What I would recommend is use that middle circle as your guide before going any further and then once you determine the hook size that is right for your hands because everyone's unique, your tension is unique, then you're able to match these squares with the neighbors on the cruise ship. So what we're going to do is approximately about four inches in there but we'll take a new measurement once we get there. We're recommending a five and a half millimeter a size I crochet hook in order to play today but again I want you to pay attention to your tension so that you will match the squares the best when it comes to all your cruising friends on board the ship. 
This particular square has been really inspired by Mandela's. So I was thinking about overlays, what you can do to make things pop and uh, have a lot of fun. So you're going to see the green and the gold when it's just spiking out with color. So it's kind of like a sun, it's kind of like a celebration, a firecracker, a pop. But when you turn this over, what you're going to notice is that there's solid circles in the back for those. So it's a really neat idea. So if you're looking for some new tips and ideas, this is definitely it for you. So enough jib uh, jibber jabber, let's get at her. We're going to start with our five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook. I'm recommending carrying one pound yarn. If you cannot use that yarn, then just get something that is equivalent to it and pay attention to your size. So even if you're changing the brand, my friends, make sure that your sizing is still accurate and you adjust your hook. So without further ado, let's get into the pattern and um, I do have a downloadable pattern for you and uh, everything has been written out uh, in an instruction format and I also have some photographs there for you to be able to see. So let's get at her. So let's get started. We're going to start off with the slip knot and we are going to insert our hook into the slip knot. If you're new to crochet, just take this step by step and you can also reverse the video if you need to. I need you to chain a total of three. So one, two, and three. To get our posts going all the way around, there's 12 of them, we're going to go into the very beginning chain. So count it back to the third one and I want you to double crochet a total of 11 times in that beginning one. So this chain that you're skipping over top of is included into this as a count. So this will make it a total of 12 at the end. So just let's just say that's one and let's just go into the one furthest from the hook, the third one and double crochet. That's two and keep on doing that until you get a total of 12. We have three and four. Now you're noticing you have the straggler. Just go right up over top of it and trap it right under in the position. So we have four done. Let's do five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And what I'd probably recommend too is just double count. Make sure you have the right number of posts. So let's just count now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Once you have that done, slip stitch to the beginning chain at the top and pull through and through and you're done. So that's what you can do if you've gone over top of your straggler. Grab your scissors and just cut that out and you don't have to worry about looking at that any further. So let's continue then on to round number two. Round number two, we're going to double the size of the circle. So I need you to chain three to start. That counts as a double crochet here and throughout in the pattern. In the same stitch, I want you to double crochet one more time. So this one's a pretty easy round. We're going to put two double crochets in each stitch going all the way around. So let's just do that together. So we're just gonna go one and two into the next stitch and then advance to the next one after that and put two into that one as well. I want you to continue all the way around putting two into each. So by the end of this round, there should be 12 sets of two going all the way around. Please do that and meet me back here in just a moment. So once you get all the way around, make sure there's 12 sets of two which I've already counted off camera and I'm just gonna slip stitch the top of the first one. So look, everything looking awesome so far. We're gonna continue with our yellow one more time and we're gonna go for round number three and we're gonna expand our circle again. Let's just chain three and that counts as a double crochet and that's the only one that will be in this beginning stitch. The next one will have two double crochets in it. So one and two. So the repeat pattern for round number three is that the next one will be one double crochet by itself and then the one after that will have two double crochets and I want you to keep that same idea going all the way around and do that and meet me back here in just a moment. So now coming up around to the end, the last stitch should be two double crochets. Now I haven't done anything special. I'm keeping in line with the count of the pattern. So remember it was one by itself and two into the next. So to finish this off, we're going to get rid of this yellow now. I want you to slip stitch to the top of the first chain three that you had started with and we're gonna get rid of this color. I'm recommending cruisers that you actually get rid of your colors and use your darning needle to be able to finish those off as well and uh, get that done. 
Okay, so let me show you how to do that and I'm only gonna show it once in this tutorial and it'll be, built, it'll be right here. To hide in the loose ends, use a tapestry needle. Really, it doesn't take that long. Turn it over to the back and then just glide it through the back side of your, of your circle. Do this for every time you need to change your colors. And if you go through once, don't pull it to the point it's gonna warp your circle and then go through a different path for the second time. And then finally go back one more time, a third time and third time is a charm. So you'll never have this pop out on you. Because we are gifting the charity on the cruise ship or, or when we're done the cruise, what you wanna do is that you wanna make sure your tail ends are woven in and because you're exchanging with your friends as well on board, do this because then they don't have to do it later. So let's move on now to round number four and round number four, we're gonna start getting ourselves into more fancy footwork. Let's do it now. So let's take a quick measurement. Now I've gone further in the tutorial than I should have but um, I've just put this right back in the tutorial where it should be. So after you get these three done, it is approximately four inches. Now if it's three and uh, 3.75 inches, I wouldn't worry about it. If it's 4.25, I wouldn't worry about it so much. But if you're seeing a considerable difference, if your square, if your circle at this point is more than four inches, like say it's five, you're going to have to adjust your hook to make it smaller to compensate for the uh, size. And then just do the three rounds again and see if you've gotten closer to the four. Now if your circle is much smaller, like a three, then what you wanna do is that you want to increase your hook size and then uh, just redo these three rounds once again and try to get as close to the four as possible. And I'm only telling you that because on the ship, people that don't pay attention to that, you end up with squares that are significantly smaller and squares that are way too big. So just take a time and just do your first one to get your size crochet hook that is going to match this particular moment. As we move up into rounds number four, five, and six, they're all the purple. But what we need to pay attention to is that we have these spaces in between, okay, which is creating this starburst. I'm going to show you a way that you do not have to fasten that off as you're doing it. You just have to be very strategic on how you're finishing off each round so that it will, these green and the gold will fit into the proper space. So rounds number four, five, and six will be this purple. Again, that's just my choice. You can make it any color that you wish. Let's move along to round number four. So let's begin round number four. We're gonna start off with the slip knot and I'm giving you a holiday on this particular um, section right here on round number four. So every other stitch is gonna get something. So we're just gonna start off, it can be any one that you wish. Just start off in any one and just insert in and pull through and chain a total of three. So one, two, and three. In the same stitch you just did the join, I want you to put two more double crochets in there. So one and two. So the repeat pattern going all the way around is that, and you see how I went over, over top of that? You wanna do that so you can get rid of it later. Skip the next stitch and put three double crochets into the one after that. You're going to do a total of 18 of these sets going all the way around if you're skipping the stitches and if you're doing the right count then it'll work out for you. So skip the next stitch and put three double crochets into the next. Please do that all the way around for round number four and then we'll come back and then we're gonna start doing some overlay work. Do not fasten off this yarn when you get to the end. So let's get there now. Okay, so now we're all the way back. Now my cruiser friends, where you're going to struggle if you're going to screw up your count at all will be right where you did the slip stitching when you finished off your circle. Make sure that you don't including that slip stitching as an extra stitch. That's where people go wrong in circles. So there should be 18 sets of three going all the way around. So let's count together. I haven't done that yet so let's, if I'm screwing up you'll see it live on camera. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. 18 is your magic number my friends. So am I reminding you of Sesame Street? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So what you're going to do is that you want just to pull up a loop and let it hold. In the pattern it says to fasten off but you don't need to. So this is kind of your ad-libbing. This is where the tutorial comes into play. If you went up over top of the starting strand, I want you to get rid of that because you'll end up with all these tails at the end. But if you went over top of it, you should be good to clear that out. Let's grab our next color which will, in my case will be Mardi Gras green and uh, this pad or color on camera will be called Kelly green. So if you're using Karen one, one pound it's Kelly green. Let's bring back our green now or bring up our green and let's start round number five. We're now going to begin our overlay. So now that you have your large loop, I want you to start 
in right here. If you're left-handed, it will, it'll still be where I'm pointing. So what I want is that I want you to, to create a slip knot. Create an extra long strand because you'll have to get rid of that later. Okay, and insert it onto the hook. So my cruiser friends, I notice some of you don't know where to stick your hook. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you where to stick your hook, okay? So here we go. So this is where we have the strand coming out from the ball, okay? I want you to stick your hook right where I'm pointing. It is the third one and I want you to stick it in behind. So I want you to find the third stitch back, <laughs> okay? So look at it, you see the stitch and I want you to bend it over <laughs> and go in from the back side of the stitch. Okay, so it's, you're just attaching it. It's not a stitch, it's just attaching. Okay, so you should still have those stitches clear in the front. Okay, and I want you to wrap that hook and attach it to the back. <laughs> so just pull through and through. That stabilizes this whole thing from falling apart. So let's put that straggler in behind. I'm continuing, I do not want an outtake here. So now that it's attached, you're ready to play. So I want you to look directly between the two stitch, uh, the two groups and there's a lonely little stitch all by itself. That's the one you wanna play. And then you're gonna skip the next one and you're gonna go into the one that is in the next. So let's just start. It's gonna be a treble. I know how you love your trebles. So wrap and wrap and it's a front post treble into the one that is resting in between. So it's a front post treble. So go around it and then just pull through, pull through two, two, and two. Now if you can count to three, this is not a hard pattern for you. So let's just do that. So one, two, and three. That's a chain. And I want you to skip to the next one that is directly in between the two groups. It's right there. So you're technically just skipping one. Wrap the hook twice and coming through and then pull through two, two, and two. Do you see that? So chain three, so one, two, three, and then skip the next one and go right into the one in between. So how many of these do you have going all the way around? That is the million dollar question, but there's no million dollars today. <laughs> I don't make that kind of money. So what do we have? We're gonna chain three. So if you have 18 sets of three going all the way around, you should have 18 of these front post trebles going all the way down. So what I want you to do is continue that all the way around and we'll meet you at the other side because we strategically have to position this starting strand in a way that we can still access it without interfering with this. So let's continue on. As I come back around you're going to notice that there's two sets here of threes and this is where all of this strand's coming from. So I want you to take that large loop and the strand leading to the yarn ball and put it in front of the work. If you don't put it in front of the work, it's not gonna work for you. Trust me. So we're gonna just chain three. So one, two, three. And now that that's leaning forward, I still want you to go and skip the next one down here and front post treble like that. And with them leaning forward, both the loop and the straggler, I want you to chain three. One, two, three and join it to the top of the first treble. If you do not put that forward now, what's gonna happen is that you're going to interfere with this later on. So making sure that it's in front now will keep it out of the way. Now up until this moment, I've always been fastening off everything, but if you don't wanna fasten off, you don't need to. Just hold it in front now and fasten off. So using your darning needle, I want you to get rid of this green, so create that extra long tail using the darning needle like I showed you before and finish this off in the back side so that it's not gonna fall out. So do that and I'll meet you back and we'll continue then to round number six. So now that your yarn strands are in front here so that you didn't have to fasten off, let, you will notice that this is almost like a cage. Okay, so you can see it's like a picket fence. It's just sitting in here. It's attached to where I asked you to do it because it's easier to start off that way when it's attached. This is what the back looks like. Isn't that pretty? So this square can turn over, over to the back and not be too much of a problem for a visual. I want you now to you start up and get your hook ready and I want you to pick up that loop and pull it back tight, back to in position. We're going to work in front of these chain three spaces but before we do, let me zoom in. 
So to start this one we're only gonna play within these three stitches that you see. Okay, so we need to, if we are, if these green ones need to be shifted around, this is when you're going to do it and just shifting to make sure that you're catching all the stitches. You're going to chain three which counts as a double crochet and in the next one here you want to put two double crochets. So that's the middle one of this grouping of three. So the chain three was in the beginning of the grouping of three. So there's two into that one and then the final one in that grouping of three is gonna be one. So do you see why that you attached it in the back when you did the green? You would have interfered with this stitch. So the first one is one double crochet, two into the next, one. So what you're seeing with the green, I want you to shift it. So it should be resting right in between the next grouping of threes. So just shift it and then just so that you can see the first one once again and you're going to double crochet into that one. So by shifting it, you're getting it into position and it's always gonna stay there. So it's one double crochet, the next one has two. And then the final one of the grouping of three is gonna be one double crochet by itself. Okay, so now here's the green. I want you to just shift it so that you can see the first one of the groupings of three and double crochet. So see how you're not touching that green at all? It's just it's sitting in there. And the next one will have two. And the final one will have one by itself. Let's turn it over. So what you're seeing here, this is that green line I showed you in the very beginning. So it's just resting in behind. Isn't that awesome? So continue that same idea going all the way around for round number six. So I've now come up all the way around and what you just need to do is that slip stitch to the top of the beginning and all of your green has now been trapped into position. So pull up a large loop again and we're going to then start and I'm gonna bring gold because gold is gonna be in the next overlay that sits in here as well. So let's move along then to round number seven. So we're now going to begin an overlay once again. So this is the second time and the last time that it'll appear in this project. So create an extra long tail and let me show you where to stick your hook. Now we, we did it before, we stuck it in the back. So we have a grouping of four. See where this is where the, the strand is that we're resting. I want you to attach it to the second one in. Okay, so the second one, just bend it forward and come in from the behind. Sorry, let's just put that on the hook first. And just bend it over and get, just attach it to a fiber in the back. Okay. And this is just gonna stabilize it to hold it into position so that your first stitch looks accurate. Now technically what you could have done is that you could attach it down here and chain up your four and then that's a front plus treble. It doesn't look right. It's better that you attach it from the back. So now we're gonna do a front post treble and we're gonna go into the middle one of the grouping of three. So this is the last round that you did. We're gonna come into this round right here. Okay, so just look straight down and front post treble into the middle one. It should be directly in between the green that you see. Now because the circle is bigger, I want you to chain four. So one, two, three, and four. Remember last time it was three, it's now four because the circle is bigger. I want you to skip in between the next set of greens and go to the middle one in the purple and front post treble. Do you see that? Chain four. Again, come into the next set of greens. Look right, it's the middle one. And I want you to do that all the way around for round number seven. So please do that and I'll see you at the end of this round. Make sure you just uh, stick with me to the very end so I can show you what to do again with this stri or with the starting strands that we did with the purple. I'm now coming around to the end. I wanna take the loop and the yarn leading to the ball, put it in front of your work. If you leave it in behind, you're gonna be in trouble. You still need to chain your four and attach it to the top of the first front post treble. So now your one right in the front here is going to be ready for you when you're ready to go. I want you to fasten off the yellow, use your tapestry needle and then join me back here and then we'll continue with the purple one last time. So let's just pull our loop back up and this strand here and the loop should be in front of the project. You can't move it um, if it's not in the front now, you can't move it once this has been secured. So that's why we moved it in front. So let's uh, continue along. So what I want you to do, we're in the top of the first 
stitch and then there's a second you see this overlay and then there's another one in behind and another one. Okay, so there's a total of four of them. So if you turn it over you can see all four of those here. So what we have to do, the cruisers that are working on this, this is where if any place they're screwing up this is where it is. You're going to chain three which counts as a double crochet. You are going to double crochet in the next purple one. Okay. Now remember how we shifted the green. You need just to shift this yellow out of the way closest to your hook and I want you to double crochet in the other two stitches that are left in that same section. So you're essentially just skipping over the yellow so that it gets into position. So now we have four stitches complete. The fifth stitch is right in the space where these two groups meet. So go right into that space and that's a double crochet. So let's begin again. So the first two are double crocheted right into the purple. So one and go to the next stitch for two. Shift that yellow so that you can see the other two stitches that are in that same group. It's being sandwiched in between. Do you see that? And then you're going to double crochet into this gapping space that is in between the two groups. So you're essentially pushing this yellow in behind. Let's just review one more time. So the first two stitches are in this purple. One and two. Shift the yellow closest to your hook so that you can see the other two and double crochet into those two as well. And then go into the gapping space that is resting in between the two groups. And I want you to continue that all the way around and you're going to notice then you have your two strings or your two bands of color all the way around and you'll see that the bursting is happening before your very own eyes. So without further ado continue that and I'll see you at the end of this round. So let's take a quick measurement. Now I've gone further in the tutorial than I should have but um, I've just put this right back in the tutorial where it should be. So after you get these three done it is approximately four inches. Now if it's three and uh, 3.75 inches I wouldn't worry about it. If it's 4.25 I wouldn't worry about it so much but if you're seeing a considerable difference if your square if your circle at this point is more than four inches like say it's five you're going to have to adjust your hook to make it smaller to compensate for the uh, size and then just do the three rounds again and see if you've gotten closer to the four. Now if your circle is much smaller like a three then what you want to do is that you want to increase your hook size and then uh, just redo these three rounds once again and try to get as close to the four as possible. And I'm only telling you that because on the ship people that don't pay attention to that you end up with squares that are significantly smaller and squares that are way too big. So just take a time and just do your first one to get your size crochet hook that is going to match this particular moment. So now that I'm coming all the way back around do not forget that you have a gapping space when you started you were in the very first one so you have to finish off by putting a double crochet in that gapping space and then just join it to the top of the first chain three that you started with. Now take your time get rid of the loose end and fasten this off because now we're going to then um, continue along and we're still gonna do one more um, circle and then we're gonna start transitioning into a square. So please do this now. Let's move along to round number nine. Let's create a slip knot and the written instruction has it stated differently but the result is still the same. So this is where a tutorial comes into play. You can attach to any one of these particular stitches. Any one's good. Here's what I'm gonna recommend just for simplicity and I wrote it a certain way so that you can keep in track with the pattern but because this is a tutorial I can show you how to cheat. So I want you to attach to any stitch and I want you to chain three which counts as a double crochet. In the same one I want you to double crochet one more time. So you have two into that same one. So the repeat pattern going all the way around is that the next four will be by themselves. So one and two. See how I'm going up over top of the stitch work as well. Keep it out of the way and underneath the stitches. So four in a row are by themselves. Once you get those four done the next one will be two into the same one. So the repeat pattern going all the way around is gonna be two into the first one and then one into the next four. Two into the first one, 
and uh, one into the next four. Please do that all the way around for round number nine. So we're coming up near to the end. I got my two in here. That means that there's four left. Now I'm going to show you something. If you do not have and you've accidentally missed a stitch at all along the way, don't frog. You don't need to. Just try to make it work. Like just make it work. Um, just try to do your very best to be able to make sure it does work. If you're left with an extra stitch, just put two stitches together. So let's just say that these, I had, I, I have an extra stitch. How you do that is that you just wrap the hook going in, pull through and then wrap the hook again, go into the next one, pull through and then pull through all three. So you just created a together stitch. In my case, my stitch count happens to be right. I will be very transparent with you when I was doing this. I wasn't always right and so therefore I, I kind of fudged it along the way and that's what creators do, right? We, we just make it work and we have a really good time in doing it, right? So that's the story. I'm sticking with it today my friends. So we're going to um, just slip stitch then the very final one to the top of the first chain three and this gold is done. So what I want you to do is fasten off again and we're gonna start transitioning to a square next. It's really not hard to transition to a square but you really do gotta keep an eye on your counts. So I'm going to weave in my ends and let's begin doing the square. So don't ha have fear. Let's jump in this together next. So let's begin round number 10. Gonna start off with the slip knot. Now the, the transition to a square is over three rounds. So it can't be just one. The counts that I did make sense and they're actually easy to remember. So when you're working on this, maybe the first few maybe be harder for you to remember but once you get pounding these out, the, actually it becomes very simple and then actually I was on the plane doing it um, without actually looking at the instructions and I'm not sure how many times I, were, I can use the word actually in one sentence but I'm doing a really damn good job of it. <laughs> Just ask Jeannie, she hates it. Okay, so let's continue. So I'm sticking my hook into any one of the stitches and we're gonna start off with the corner. So we're just gonna attach and I want you to chain a total of five. So when you do a total of five, that counts as a double crochet and chain two. So let's just do this. So one, two, three, there's your double crochet, four and five and that is your double crochet and chain two. In the same stitch, I want you to place another double crochet. So each one of the corner stitches on this one here comprise of one double crochet, chain two, one double crochet. So we're now going to move along the side. So you're going to notice that it's gonna start changing it to a square but it's not immediate. So you just have to be patient with it and keep an eye on those counts. So let's begin. We're gonna double crochet in the next four. So let's just do that together. So one, two, three and four. Now we're gonna double or we're gonna half double crochet in the next six. So let's do the next six together. The reason why we're changing the heights is that we have to compensate for the radius of a circle. So the next six are gonna be half double crochet. So let's count those out together. So one, two, three, four, five and six. And now we're gonna single crochet for six. So I try to keep it simple. So six half double crochets, the next six are singles. So one, two and three. We're now halfway through the side of the square. So let's continue. So four, five and six. The next six is gonna be a mirror of what we just did. So the next six is six half doubles. So one, two, three, four, five and six and now the next four are double crochets. So let's do that. So one, two, three and four. And to finish this off we have a corner. So the corner is gonna be a double crochet, chain two, double crochet into the same stitch. So when you push this down, do you see? You've gotten wider here where the corners are and it's, you see why it's gonna take a few rounds in order to get back to a square. I'm going to show you one more side and then you can reverse the video back for the other two sides that are remaining. 
So let's carry on into the next one. Watch this slip stitching. I just happened to land there. Make sure that you don't accidentally add another stitch. So the first four are double crochets. One, two, three, and four. The next six are half double crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. The next six are your singles again. So let's do, the, do that. So you have one, two, three. This is the halfway point of the side. Four, five, and six. And now we're going back to half doubles for six. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then the next four are double crochets. So one, two, three, and four. And the next one is your corner again. So it's gonna be a double crochet, chain two, double crochet into the same one. So you can reverse the video back to where we were right here and begin all again to do the next one. So you're going to notice it's gonna start looking more square. It's not quite there and I want you to continue the rest of this round and meet me back here in just a moment. So coming all the way back around, I got my six half double crochets in. The final four stitches are here and those are gonna be double crochets. So one, two, three, and four. And I want you to slip stitch to the third chain up on your corner. Pull through and through. And that's what it looks like. So if it's a little bit buckling on you, it will settle down and uh, you're gonna see it's starting to come out with your little points. So let's move along then to round number 11 as we continue. So we have two more rounds to make this square all the way to the end. So let's move along to round number 11. In round number 11 we're gonna start ourselves in the corner. But in the corner we're not there yet. So we have to slip stitch there first. So slip stitch to your first corner. So just pull through and through and now you're ready to go. So we're going to start off then in the corners for this time around is that in corners it'll be two double crochet, chain two, 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 two double crochet. So let's chain up three which counts as a double crochet and then you're gonna double crochet one more time and then chain two and two more double crochets all into that same chain two corner space. So the counts of the stitch heights are going to change as we move along. So let's uh, follow along. So the first three are gonna be double crochets. So one, two, and three. Okay, the next six are gonna be half doubles. So you got one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then the next ten are single crochets. I know that's a lot, right? But we're getting closer and closer to being a flat space. So we're, we have to take our time. So let's do ten single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, the next three are half doubles. So one, two, three, four, five, and six are half doubles. The remaining three that you see, you see that, is a double crochet. So one, two, and three. Now we're moving to the corner. So the corners are always gonna be the same of two double crochets. So one and two, chain two and two double crochet into the corner. I'm going to go one more side with you. So when you push it down like so, you see that you're getting more and more flatter along the sides of the edge to create that square. Let's just do one more side together and then you can reverse the tutorial back if you haven't picked it up yet. So the first three in a row are gonna be double crochets. So one, two, and three. The next six are gonna be half double crochets. So we have one, 
two, three, four, five, and six. Now we're back to the singles for ten. So let's do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, the next six are half doubles. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then the final three are each a double crochet. So one, two, and three. And then your corners, do you remember what those corners are? There are two double crochet. So one and two, chain two, and two double crochet again. So one and two. So you can reverse back this video to get yourself back to this starting to, to figure this out again if you haven't picked it up yet and then meet me back here at the end of this round and I'll show you what to do. We have one more transitional to do uh, to a do to get to a final square and then we're gonna do our final border together. So I'm coming up all the way back around the final three stitches is your double crochets. You already have the first corner start uh, done and then you're just gonna slip stitch to the first one of the chain three. We're now going to then go on into round number 12. So round number 12 is again another transition. So if you put this down you see that it's almost a square. Now when I was designing this I was gonna say okay this is good enough but it's not. You need to get a little bit more height on these edges in order for you to have the square look that you have in the final assembly. Okay. So don't be cheap. <laughs> Maybe that's not the right word, but don't be uh, don't be lazy about it. That was I'm more saying that for myself because I was going to do that. So we're going to slip stitch to ourselves to a corner. So one, and go right into a corner, chain two space, and then begin again. So we're going to chain up three counts as a double crochet, and this corner is like it's going to be for the remaining. So it's going to be a total of another double crochet. So you got two, chain two, and two more double crochet into the same one. So the stitch count is gonna change once again. So what we have is that we have double crochet for the first three. So one, two, and three. The half double crochet is going to change to only doing five of them. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Now we're very close to getting a, a nice flat space. So the next 16 are single crochets. So let's count it together. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, and 16. So you can see that it kind of went flat on the top. See? Isn't that a miracle? Not really. It's mathematics. So the next five are half double crochets. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then the final three are double crochets. So one, two, and three and now your corner. The corners are always gonna be the same. So it's gonna be two double crochet. So one and two, chain two and two double crochet. So I'm going to take you through one more side and then you can reverse back the video if you haven't picked it up yet. So the first three are double crochets. So one, two, and three. The next five are halves. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. The next sixteen are singles. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. The next five are half double crochets. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And the final three that you have left is one double crochet. So 1, 2, and 3. And then your corners next, same as always. So chain, or sorry, two double crochets, chain two, and two double crochet. Please do the other two remaining sides. Just reverse back this, um, this two right here. So go back and then you're gonna see that your square is pretty much, your circle has gone to a square. So please do that for the remaining two sides and meet me back here and we'll do the final round together which will complete off your celebration square and we can celebrate good times together. So returning back around the final three stitches are double crochets. No extra math done here. This is just the way the stitch count works out. So everything should be good. So you're going to finish off your green here. Fasten in those loose ends and I want you then to do one more round which is the border round in order to complete off your square together. So let's uh, do that next and uh, fasten off and let's do our final round for round number 13. So let's do our final round, lucky number 13 and it's now time to celebrate good times because this is it for the final for you and then you're just gonna bring these here on the ship. Now you'll find in the instructions that I will attaching the final border. For those that are not attending the cruise you can figure out how to do that. Just a very simple way of a simple border at the very end. You're just gonna insert your hook with your yarn into the chain two gapping space of a corner and chain a total of three which counts as your double crochet. You know that by now in this part of the tutorial. So you're going to chain two to turn the corner and two more double crochet. So you really don't have to count other than the corners at this moment. So each stitch going all the way across is going to be one double crochet in each. The first stitch is just uh, right there. Just go right up over top of your stragglers. The best way that you can handle this project is to deal with the stragglers. I call them stragglers but it's the loose ends right off the bat so you don't have a million tails to be able to get rid of at the very end. One thing that you're going to notice is that as you transition from double crochet to um, half double which is the next one, the stitch doesn't always look right and that's just because it's just switching the stitches. So just make sure you still stick your hook in the right stitch in order to get that to work. So it's one double crochet in each of the stitches going all the way across and then in the next corner it's two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet and carry on. Please do that all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round and we'll celebrate good times and finish this tutorial off together today. So I'm now just coming all the way back around. I'm double crocheting myself to where I had started and that's it. So my cruiser friends, this is where your journey ends. You're going to get your nine done and make sure you bring them to the ship with you. <laughs> you don't ever wanna pack your luggage and forget this especially if you're gonna put time into it. And for those that would like to continue, if you go to the more information of this video, there's gonna be a link and the link will have more instruction on how to assemble and uh, just a really quick easy border to be able to do. The cruisers on the ship will be assigned an idea of being able to go and do more extra fun things with their border. You're the creator, you're the artist, you can decide what works for you. I kind of left it an open free for all in the sense that you have choice on what you want to do. One thing with creativity is that you never wanna be forced to feel like you have to do something. Uh, creativity comes to you when, uh, when sparks of inspiration just hit you and you have to listen to what is in your heart and what you prefer to do. So I'm just weaving in those final uh, tails right at the very end. Please do that especially if you're a crochet cruiser bringing it on board so that when somebody grabs your square from the community table then your square will be completely done. Please just make sure that you just go through your project once again. If you wanna block it, so if you can do a wet blocking, let me just zoom out right now. If you wanna wet block it, just damp it a little bit and lay it out and it will sit flat on you. Just go through, make sure there's no tails left within your project in order to secure and that's good to go. So for my Crochet Cruiser friends, we'll see you in February of 2019 there on the cruise ship in New Orleans and uh, we are gonna have a good time. We also uh, make sure that you do sign up for the corporate hotel if you need the hotel and uh, sign up for anything else and be paying attention to our private crochet group too. So on behalf of my friends at joanne.com, I'm Mikey from the Crochet Crowd. Thank you so much for joining me today. We hope that you've enjoyed this project. Until next time, have a good one. Bye-bye.